Oh yeah, this is gonna be fun. Service call at Bowling Alley. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much for tuning in. It's me, Mikey Pipes. Today, we are in Woodmere, New York at the Woodmere Lanes Bowling Alley. We have a one inch copper water service coming in to a one inch water meter. We have a T here that is for a hose faucet. We have a shutoff valve here to isolate the building water supply. And they recently got a letter about six months ago from the water authority telling him that if they don't have one of these, they're going to shut off the water to the building. In case you don't know what this is, this is called a backflow prevention device. The purpose of this contraption is to allow water only to travel in one direction. That away. From the street to the building to all the connecting fixtures. The toilets, the showers, wash machines, um, sinks, all that good stuff, right? So if there ever is a back pressure or a negative pressure where a fire extinguisher, fire, um, you know, pump is being used or there's a break in the water main, any of this building pressure, this water, is not going to work its way back to the public water supply. They do that to prevent any hazardous condition, which could be in the building, from being introduced to the public water supply. It is a code under cross-connection control in almost all 50 states. Every state, to my knowledge, has a program in place for cross-connection control. That's what it technically falls under, right? Because if you have, for example, this hose, right? Let's say shoved into a floor drain, draining for whatever reason, or put into a 55-gallon drum and we're filling that with water. If during that same time there's a loss of pressure at the street side, right, that water here that's in this building, including what's in this hose and wherever it's connected to, will not be siphoned into the building supply and into the public water supply. So today, step by step, I'm going to show you how we install this double check valve, which is a type of backflow prevention device. Now, when you have backflow prevention devices, you have this, which is called a double check valve. There's a check valve here and a check valve there that lets water only travel in one direction. See that arrow? From here to here, not from here to here. You have another type of backflow prevention device called a reduced pressure zone that has a discharge at the bottom of the device should a, a, a condition occur where the water is, wants to be sucked back into the public supply, it's going to discharge out of the relief. And you also have what we call a pressure vacuum breaker. In my jurisdiction, in New York State, the double check valve and the reduced pressure zone valves need to be tested on an annual basis. The pressure vacuum breakers, once every five years. Now, we're gonna, I'm going to show you step by step how we do this. I have female connections on my inlet and my outlet side and for future servicing and possible repair replacement i'm using vega press by female sorry press by male unions on both the inlet and outlet side so should a condition occur where i need to replace this valve i can replace i can disconnect the two unions and take this out put the new one in have a nice day uh, the budget, fortunately, allows for this. These are about $37, $38 each plus tax. <laughs> you know, this is not a cheap job. Um, also, came into consideration, we have to do something with that as well. So I'll show you step by step how All we right, do this. So the first thing I did is using some PTFE. I like the Blue Monster Teflon tape. I put that on the male threads on both unions, and I tighten that up with a, pair, uh, a wrench and a pair of channel locks. I had the other wrench available, just this was easier for me to do. Out now, a good technician is observant of his surroundings. I'm going to picture this somewhere here, okay? I need to get rid of this T right here because any connection point 
on the on the inlet side of the backflow prevention device to the water service coming in cannot have any kind of connection where we can do you know we can use a hose faucet and that would defeat the whole purpose of installing a backflow prevention device so i'm going to take out this female adapter we'll put a small piece of copper here we'll put a one inch 90 here and another small piece of copper we'll put a backflow prevention device here and then i'll add a new t for hose faucet use right there i'm also going to secure the piping to the wall here with some threaded rod and some split ring hangers so stick around smash that thumbs up button guys all right i am now going to drill some supports for our threaded rod um the top right here i'm going to put in that press by female t for the hose faucet connection then i'm gonna have a little piece of copper here then my backflow prevention device uh, i'm gonna cut right here but before i actually cut all the way through we're gonna take a quick little measurement i'm gonna drill a hole right there uh to add my my shield my 3h threaded rod and my split ring hanger so i have my milwaukee m18 rotary hammer and i am just gonna drill a hole right there I have a piece of electric tape. I got a piece of electric tape right there so I can mark my depth. Now I'm going to take one of the anchors with the center punch and send that bad boy home. All right, so I had that anchor in place, the 3 8 threaded rod, my one inch split ring hanger for copper, and now this pipe is secure. I have another one down here, and that's going to help us with our uh, the weight and help to support our water meter. Um, that band iron isn't legit, neither is it there, but you know, they have, it must have a ceiling on band iron here. Wow, there's nothing but band iron. And you can see that they're not using the steel band iron. You, they're, they're not using copper band iron, so you're having that... That, that, uh, that metal on copper action going on right there, just like it is here. Look at this. Disgusting. Anyway, back to the project at hand. Okay, I'm going to finish cutting this and get the show on the road. All right, remove the piping, the meter union off of there. Now I'm going to prepare the piping for our T. I got a piece of emery paper and we'll use our deburring tool, which only comes out when I'm showing you on camera. And we're gonna deburr the pipe there. Wow, you wanna see something pretty nasty, folks? Watch this. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> that is nasty. All right, so here's that Vega one inch press by half inch female adapter. Uh, you know what, maybe we'll put it just like that. Perfect. And then we'll come down with another small little piece. And once Dove has separated the meter union from the female adapter, uh, we'll get the show on the road. Doesn't look like Dove's having a good day today. Yeah. Is that tea coming straight out? Uh, I could go a little more this way. And that's one. That's two. So there is the finished product, the Watts Lead Free 007 M1QT. Backflow prevention device, double check valve. We got the approved connection. After the backflow prevention device, it was there. 
We have a split ring hanger and threaded rod there. One in there as well. It broke. <laughs> so I just tightened up that side extra crazy because I only had two. So let's turn on the water, make sure the valves are closed, which that one is open. And that's closed. All right, we have the water service back on. We're gonna flush out from some sinks and some toilets. There are no flushometers here, so we're good with that. But this union was a little loose, tighten that up. We're gonna dry everything off and have a nice day. If you're in the Long Island, New York City metropolitan area and you just got a letter from the DEP or your local water authority and you need a backflow prevention device, give me a call at 516 348 6 Three zero zero. If you're in the Central Florida, Orlando area, and you have a backflow prevention device that you need to be tested, serviced, repaired, or installed, give me a call at my at Plumbing and Air by Tom at four zero seven three seven five eleven hundred. Catch you in the next one. Be well. God bless. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you're gonna get a behind the scenes tour here, behind the pins, behind the pins. Let's see what. How many lanes are twenty? Right. Twenty. Yeah. Nice. So I did see some video of this, but this is the first time in person. Damn. So how does this work? All right, grabs those. It goes on this little spinny thing. Then it hits that, goes on a conveyor belt and gets placed in a piece. And I guess the arm knows where it's going. This can determines what position the pin, the distributor is at each pin. And the springs on the back determine how much. That spring looks a little, uh, spring normal. What's that? that yeah, that's a catch. Okay. <laughs> yep. Wow, it did that fast. So you have an extra set of pins yeah, each, ready each to go. 20 pins. Ah. That's cool. Look at that. What kind of motor is on this? Oh, you have one motor for both. One motor for both. Yeah, every machine has three motors. A back end motor, a table motor, and a sweet motor. 110, 20? Yeah. Wow, look at that. What's the average life expectancy of a pin? I mean, they look pretty banged up. It depends on how you use it. How often did they get replaced here? Every, well, these, these actually have lasted uh, a new uh, company. These have lasted the longest. So typically, we would change them out every year or every other year. Oh, wow. So, these, so the, really a short is, period of time. Yeah, these are going on their second year. They're actually still in good shape. Wow. Good stuff. That's cool. I love shit like this. This is awesome. Good stuff.